Okay, so we're going to work on a couple of factoring practice problems. Um, we're going to start with, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of problems. These were a few that a friend had a question about, so it'll be good practice. X cubed plus 216 equals 0. So we want to get x by itself, so we'll subtract 216 from both sides. So x cubed is negative 216. So from here, right now the x is being cubed because of this. So the way we get around that is we just take the cubed root of both sides. Because this takes care of this, which leaves us with x. And the cubed root of 216 is 32, I think. Think or not 32, um, 16. I think. Let's see, I'll go ahead and just plug it in my calculator real quick. Math negative 216. Oops, uh, math negative 216, and it's negative 6. <clears throat> negative 6, not 16. Duh. Um, hopefully my thing's still recording. What is this thing's problem? There we go. Okay. So, negative six. Now, one important thing I want to mention is it's okay to take an odd power, so, for example, cubed, of a negative number. It's the even powers where you'll get imaginary numbers, so that's okay what we did. Okay, let's try the next one. 24x cubed minus 81 equals 0. Again, we want to get 80 or we want to get the x by itself. So we can start by just adding 81 to both sides. This drops and you have 24x cubed equals 81. Now we can divide both sides by 24 because 24 over 24 is just one. So we get x cubed by itself. And let's see, 81 over 24 is 27 over eight. And if you had to do this by hand, you would just look to see, okay, well, um, you know, what numbers go into 81 that also go into 24. And lastly, we need to, once again, take the cubed root of both sides. So x equals the cubed root of 27 over 8, which we could think of as just being the cubed root of 27 over the cubed root of 8. So x equals the cubed root of 27. Well, what times what times what gets you 27? And if you don't know, you can always just plug it in your calculator. 3 over 2. Okay. And real quick, just so you know, we can always test these by plugging them in. So if I take, for example, let's look at the first one. We're saying x is a solution to this, and we can make sure 100% without a doubt it's a solution. Well, let's see, negative six to the third is negative 216. So right here, I'm just gonna check, just to show everybody. Negative uh, six cubed plus 216 is negative 216 plus 216, which is equal to zero. <clears throat> We can do the same thing here. So let's check. 24 times 3 over 2 cubed minus 81 should equal 0. So let's see. 24, 3 over 2 to the third. So this is 81. 
and 81 minus 81 is 0. Let's look at the next one. x cubed equals x squared plus 20x. Now, we need to get x by itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to move this x squared over and also move this minus 20x over. Let me do it uh, like that. Let me, let me give myself a little more room so hopefully the steps are clear. So we have x cubed equals x squared plus 20x. We're going to subtract x squared and subtract 20x from both sides. But we're also going to subtract it from the other side. So we have x cubed minus x squared minus 20x is equal to 0. Because these are just 0. Now notice that this first term has an x in it as an x cubed. The second term has an x in it. It has an x squared. And this third term has an x in it. So we can factor out an x. Well, if I take 1x away from x cubed, it just goes down a power. It's just x squared. And x squared is just x. And that's just 20. And that's still equal to 0. So we have some number times times another number that's what this ultimately is it's just a number is equal to zero so what does that tell us that tells us that either this or this is zero the only time some you can multiply two things to get zero is when one of them is zero and that's called the zero product property worth remembering so the way we do this is we just set each one equal to zero. So we'll start with this one. And we say, well, x is equal to zero. And then we go to this one. x squared minus x minus 20 equals zero. So real quick, we already said x equals zero is a solution. Let's check it. Does zero cubed equal zero squared plus 20 times zero? Yes, because that's just zero on both sides. Now, for this right-hand side here, we're going to have to factor it a little bit. So we need something that if we multiply, we get this. And if we add, we get this. So let's think about it. Well, I like to think of what I can multiply to get into 20 first. And you have 20 and 1, you have 10 and 2. How about 5 and 4? Because negative 5 plus 4 is this negative 1. Because there's a 1 right there. So we would just factor this by saying negative 5 x plus 4 equals 0. Hopefully that makes sense. So we looked at negative 20. Uh, I'll do this over here. And we said, okay, this can be, the, this can be uh, 10 times 2. This could be 20 times 1. This could be 4 times 5, right? But the question is, these guys, they somehow need to add or subtract to get to negative 1. Well, 10 and 2, it doesn't matter what sign you get. If you negative 10 plus 2 or 10 plus 2, you're not going to get negative 1. And same thing with 20 and 1. But notice for this bit, if we make the 5 negative, if we do negative 5 plus 4, you do get negative 1. So that's why we did that. And if you're not sure, you can always, always distribute and FOIL. And if we were to FOIL it, you get x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 20 or x squared minus x minus 20 combining the like terms so this is the same as this so we did foil it right well notice again 
we have some number multiplying, being multiplied by another number. And again, it equals zero. Whenever you see your equation equal to zero, you should think about using the zero product property. So once again, we just set each thing that's being multiplied. We don't really need the parentheses here. Equal to zero. And now it's just a little bit of algebra. So x equals five. X equals negative four. Okay, so we got we had three solutions here. Zero, negative four, and five. And we already confirmed zero is a solution. Um, and if we want to be real simple, since we already confirmed that, we can just plug into this. We can just plug into here if we want to check to see if it works. So let's see. 16 minus 4 minus 20. Uh, let's see. Oops. That would be 16 plus 4 minus 20. Okay, so I just plug negative 4 into the blue thing I highlighted. That works. And sure enough, 5 works. So these are our solutions. Hopefully this is making decent sense. Um, we can do another one. <clears throat> so the next one, we have x to the fourth plus 13x squared plus 40 equals zero. Now this one looks a little weird at first. And notice that's because this isn't a quadratic. This is x to the fourth and then we have an x squared, and then we have nothing there. So this one will, requ will require a little bit of tricky algebra, which I'll show you in a second. But first, I want to make sure we understand why this is weird. With a quadratic, we have methods of solving. It's pretty easy to factor. Um, there's the quadratic equation. There's a lot of things we can do. But when you have something like x to the fourth plus 13x squared plus 40 equals zero, first see if there's anything you can like factor out. Well, there isn't, right? This guy only has an x in it, and this guy doesn't, so we can't really do that. Um, you can't factor in the traditional sense like this. We don't have a formula for x to the fourth. So here's the trick here. You have to do a substitution. Let u equal x squared. Okay, so that's a little weird, but just trust me. Now, if we square both sides, let's just say we square both sides, then u squared equals x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. So these are, let me write over here what we have, u equals x squared, and u squared equals x to the fourth. Now, if that's true, then this guy can be substituted for this. Instead of x to the fourth, I can just put u squared. And kind of the same way, since u is equal to x squared, I can replace that. So that's plus 13u plus 40 equals 0. So now we have a quadratic equation. We just changed the variables. Now it is because our highest power is x squared. Now we can try factoring it. So again, we want something that multiplies to give us this and adds to give us 13. So let's look at 40. How can we break 40 up? Well, we could say 40 and 1. We could say 20 and 2. What else can we say? Does 3 go into it? No, but 4 does, right? We could say 10 and 4. Um, 5 goes into it, right? 
5 and 8, I believe we can say, because 5 plus 8 is 13. So first off is we do all this. And then we see, well, how can I get some sort of combination of these two pairs to add to give me this? 40. Uh, I'm sorry. Multiply to that. Add to give us 13. Well, 5 and 8, because 5 plus 8 is 13, and 5 times 8 is 40. So now we can factor this. This is u plus 5 times u plus 8. And again, zero product property. We can say u plus 5 equals 0, and u plus 8 equals 0. So u equals negative 5, u equals negative 8. Now we want this in terms of x though, and let's remember u is equal to x squared. So really what we have, really what we have is u, since u equals x squared, then x squared equals negative 5, and x squared equals negative 8. And x squared equals negative 8. Well, to get the x by itself, we have to take the square root of both sides. So this is x equals i root 5, right? Same idea here. To get rid of the square, we square root both sides. x equals 2i root 2, because this is i root 8 which is i, same thing as this. And I can break those up into there. 4 times 2 gives me 8. So I can break 4 times 2 into its own radical, and I know this is just 2. Now, these are, imagine, these are complex solutions. Complex solutions. And normally the way we'll say is there's no real solutions. They're only imagine they're only complex, they're only imaginary. So normally we won't include those because we're not interested in that. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the next one. X to the fourth minus x squared equals x squared plus eight. Okay, well, first off, let's get all the x's together. And let's go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So x to the fourth, negative x squared minus x squared is minus 2x squared. And then minus 8 equals 0. Well, we're kind of in a similar predicament that we were in before. We have an x to the fourth and an x squared. But there's nothing else we can try to do. Try it as much as you want. You're not going to be able to simplify it. So we're going to go ahead and do our substitution. And you don't have to let it be U. It could be any letter you want. You could say, um, you could say, let's let Y equal X squared. Then Y squared equals X to the fourth. So with that, instead of X to the fourth, I can put Y squared minus 2 times y squared is just y, and then the minus 8 equals 0. Okay? So negative 8. Don't worry too much about the sign. What can we multiply to get it? 4 and 2, 8 and 1. Well, 4 and 2, we, we want to find these numbers that multiply to give us 8, but if I add slash subtract them... I get negative 2. Well, that's 4 and 2, right? Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2, and negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. So that's our mix. We can say y minus 4 times y plus 2 equals 0. And then we can simplify it as 
y minus 4 equals 0, y plus 2 equals 0. Zero product property, again, we have this being multiplied by this, and it's equal to 0. Hopefully you're okay with why we're doing that. We have y equals 4 and y equals negative 2. And y is just x squared. So I can say x squared equals 4 or x squared equals negative 2. If we square root both sides, we get x equals i root 2. And if we do that over here, we get x equals plus or minus 2. Plus or minus 2. There we go. So this, again, is complex. So we're not going to worry about that unless they want complex solutions. Instead, we'll say the solution is x equals plus or minus 2. And if you wanted to plug that in, you could always do that. Uh, let's see. 2 to the 4 minus... 2 times 2 to the second minus 8. Sure enough, it's 0. So that's a solution. I'm going to go ahead and upload this, and then I'm going to come back and do a little more because my program is being a little weird.